I fully rely on OBS for the work I do on this channel. If it's not working properly, I can't stream, I can't record, I can't really do anything that productive. Sure, I could go and use FFmpeg, or sure, I could use Simple Screen Recorder. I could do that, but I'm certainly not going to. So I have been patiently waiting for OBS 28 to finally be ready. And now it is finally here, and you know what? I think it might be better than expected. It's one thing to discuss the changes in the context of patch notes, it's another thing to have the project right in front of you, and to better go and mess around with anything you want to mess with. So the first thing you're going to notice when you open up OBS, obviously besides the new theme, is you're going to see a warning message, basically saying, all your plugins are probably broken. So we're going from a QT5 to a QT6 interface. If you are using any plugin, let's say StreamFX for example, it's going to need to be recompiled against this new interface. Now a lot of the big plugins have already been dealt with, but a lot of the smaller plugins may never be updated. As for this new theme, I don't really mind it. It is a bit more blue than I would generally like it to be. It kind of does stand out against the rest of my other windows, but it's something I can kind of get used to. And if I really don't like it, I can just go and run a different theme. One thing that may or may not bother you is that all of the buttons and most of the other things you can interact with are using a lot more vertical space, which if you run OBS on a vertical model like I do, isn't a big deal, but for some people you may not like. Obviously you can go and like move things around and resize them if you really want to, but there's only so small we can actually make things and it's still bigger than it used to be. If you don't like the theme though, you can go back and change it to the older dark theme, that is still available, or you can use your system theme or anything else like that. This is the older theme. Personally, I didn't hate this, but I can see why you might prefer one or the other. But I've been kind of liking Yami the past couple of days, plus it is the new theme, so I'm going to use it for the rest of the video. Now, one of the things I was very, very excited for was natively shipping the OBS WebSocket plugin, basically turning OBS into a web server so you can control it from an external application or even an external device. This did make its way into OBS 28. If you want to configure this, go up to Tools and go down to OBS-WebSocket Settings. From here, you can go and set the server port, you can go and set the server password or disable authentication altogether, and you can even see if anything is currently connected. The reason I was so excited for this is this plugin has existed for a long time, but there hasn't really been that much tooling made around it. But shipping this natively with OBS is going to address that problem. Over time, there's going to be more and more things made. One of the things that existed beforehand is there was a way to control OBS from your phone, for example. So if you want to have like a, a makeshift uh, stream deck, you could go and do that. And there are a couple other little things like that, but a lot of the things I would want to do, like I want to have a basically a tool to control OBS inside of Wayland. Because I've said it before, OBS on Wayland doesn't support any shortcuts, so... I need some way to control it, and if I could bind commands in my Sway config, for example, that would be really useful. But even though I read the patch notes, there is a lot of things that changed that I had no idea were changing, and a lot of them are good. So this right here is an OBS browser source. This is a web page being embedded into my OBS window. This is great for doing things like embedding my stream chat, embedding stream alerts, and things like that. So sometimes the page you are connected to will break, like a page will disconnect and things like that. And usually you'd have to go and like go into the properties and change some stuff around and force a reset to happen. Now, there's a reset button. Why that wasn't there before, I don't know, but it's very useful. And maybe you want to go and just open up the browser source in a separate window. Well, if we click on the interact button, it is going to do exactly that. So we want to do something like have your stream chat, for example, you can do that right here. Now there was already a way to have a browser element as a separate window. That was done through a doc. So if we go up to custom docs, you can go and like give it a name, give it a URL and all of that fun stuff. But if you already have it embedded into your stream window, there's no point doubling up on that effort. 
Also, there are some general usability improvements as well. That being adding dedicated buttons for things. So with the audio mixer here, usually if you want to go and open up your advanced audio properties, you would right click on one of the bars or right click on the empty space and go to advanced audio properties. This worked just fine. Now there is a dedicated button to open that up. It's not a big change, but it is something I need to go and mess with quite often. So it's nice to be easier to access. Also with changing the layout between the horizontal layout and the vertical layout, there is a dedicated button to open up that section of the menu as well. But if you want to go and access it through the context menu like you did before, that is still entirely available. It's not being removed. You now just have more options. Also, next to the Start Virtual Camera button, there is now a button to open the settings. I don't use virtual camera on my system, but having that there is quite nice for anyone that does. Virtual camera is basically a way to turn OBS into a camera for applications like, you know, Zoom, Discord, and things like that. So you want to go and do all of your fancy settings to make your Zoom calls more exciting, you can do it through OBS rather than the settings available in that application. Now this one you may have noticed already. When you grab any element in the capture space, it can be this browser source here, it can be this uh, picture in the background here, anything you grab, there is going to be indicators for where on the screen you are located. This is so useful. I wanted something like this or some sort of grid snapping system because I cannot tell you how many times I've been trying to line up elements and doing it by eye, but you can't really do it by eye because this is not a one-to-one -one size of what you're actually capturing. So trying to line it up is an absolute nightmare. This is gonna make it so easy because now you can grab something and you can also move it with your arrow keys to line it up in a pixel perfect way. This one, I'm probably not gonna use that often, but it's nice to have there for some people. Rotation controls inside of OBS. This little circle right here, if you grab this, it'll let you go and rotate any element you want. Also, it's going to snap at any of the 45 degrees. Now, previously there were ways to like mirror images and flip them upside down. This was available, but it didn't really give you that much control. Having rotation controls available as well is such a nice thing to have. Now, sadly, if you don't like the snapping, you can't disable it yet. I thought if you went into settings and went to source alignment snapping and then turn that off, that would go and fix the issue. It doesn't. That only affects snapping to things like the edge of the screen. I personally like the snapping being there, but you should have the option to go and disable it if you just don't want it. One thing you may also want to change is the red bars. So for a lot of backgrounds, red would stand out pretty well, but clearly on this one, not so much. So if we go into the settings and go to accessibility, here we can go and change it. So the setting that controls this is the source border selection color. So I'm gonna go down to custom, and then if we select a color, let's say I want it to be, I don't know, this uh, cyan, for example. If we go and apply this, now it is considerably easy to see. Now, you're probably not going to be using this feature on Linux, but it is going to be supported. So as of OBS 28, it now supports HDR capture and 10-bit color depth. So if we go down to the advanced section and then in the video section, in the color format, we can go and select a 10-bit color format and we can go and control things like our HDR nominal peak levels. Now, these HDR settings are not going to be used unless you are capturing HDR content. On Linux, you can't make HDR content. So if you're using Linux as a capture PC, you can still go and capture that from a separate device. But the reason why I wanted to mention this section is because the color format info now actually gives you details about what you are setting. Previously with color formats, it would just say the name. Now it says, for example, with NV12, NV12 8-bit 4 by 2 by 0 2 planes. So if you have, you know, less of an understanding of these color formats, now it gives you more information about what they actually are. I still think you probably shouldn't touch them unless you know what you're doing, and that's why I haven't touched them. Now they also said they were going to improve the tooltips, and you know what? 
they improved the tooltips. For example, the move scene up and down buttons now say move scene up and move scene down. Previously, they just said move up and down. It's not a major change, but it does give more indication about what's actually being done. And there's things like this advanced audio properties button. It says advanced audio properties. So even if you don't know what the button does, you can hover over it and it's going to tell you what it's actually doing. Now, not everything has a tooltip. For example, if we go to the start and stop recording buttons, they don't have them. But the text on the button does a good job at explaining what it needs to do. And speaking of recording, we finally have this incredible feature. Inside of the recording settings, automatic file splitting based on time, based on the file size, and based on you manually splitting with a hotkey. Why do I care about this? Well, there have been instances in the past where I've been doing a podcast. My podcasts go for about two hours. And I've had times where I record the entire thing and it corrupted and I lose an entire podcast. So what I try to do nowadays is split it up every so often, like every 20 minutes, every 30 minutes, something like that. Just so if we lose a section, we lose a section and not the entire thing. Now, though, I can just do it automatically. That's... Very nice, because previously, I would have to like stop the show for a moment and restart the show. It just disrupted everything. Now I don't have to do anything. But all of this is just what I'm personally happy to see. It's by no means everything that is changing. For example, there's now native Apple Silicon support. If you've got an NVIDIA card over on Windows, you can now use NVIDIA's background removal tool to remove your background without using a green screen. And there's a bunch of other great things that have changed that I'll leave linked in the description down below if you want to go and read the patch notes for yourself. So that is going to be it for me. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you use OBS? Do any of these changes affect you? Maybe you're someone who heavily uses a bunch of plugins and half your plugins just no longer work. If that is the case, go and roll back to the previous version and wait until everything is working like it should be. Or if they're not going to work, you're going to have to drop them or find new plugins. Anyway, that's going to be it for me. If you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, something very paid, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Optum Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.